Let's make custom armor with Gecko Lip. Alright, we found ourselves back into the other ones more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how you can add custom armor with Gecko Lip, specifically a custom armor model. And this is going to be the custom armor model, Amethyst Armor in this case. And you can see, well, it definitely is custom, right? It has a custom texture and all of that. And is once again a block bench file right here. Now, this block bench file, including all of the other files, are available to you in the description below for download. What you need for this block bench file, of course, is once again the Gecko Lip Animation Utils plugin. So that's very important. When, when you have that, then you should be good to go. And then we want to start exporting some stuff. So the first thing we want to go to file, export, and then export Gecko Lip model. That's going to be the amethyst underscore armor.geo.json. There you go. That's the first one. Then we want to go to animate. Now, in this case, this doesn't have any animation that plays. Now you can still add those animations similar to when you have the entity or the item or the block. Those are exactly the same function, exactly the same. In this case, I just don't have an animation associated with it, but that's fine. We still want to go to animation, export animations, confirm. That's the amethyst underscore armor dot animation dot adjacent file. There you go. And then last but not least, we want to get the PNG. So just right click, save as. And that's the amethyst underscore armor dot PNG. So those are once again three files that we can immediately add to our assets. So the animation JSON file, of course, goes into the animations folder. The geo file goes into the geo folder and the texture. I'm actually going to make a custom directory in there called armor and that's where the amethyst underscore png goes. So that is pretty much the the first step done for the textures. We also want to add the textures for the item. That's going to be basically the boots and the leggings and all of that. That is going to be in the textures item folder. Those are going to be these ones, right? So this is the boots and the helmet and so on and so forth. So that else, of course, also needs to be added. And they're also available to you for download in the description below. Now, there's a couple of steps. So the first part is going to be how you can basically add normal armor as well. So this would work if you didn't want to use Gecko Lip as well. This can also work. Uh, and then the second part is basically how to add all of the gecko lip stuff which is pretty much just going to be a model and a renderer and then changing the item class again but the first thing that we need is in the item package we want to get the mod armor materials class and this is going to be a very interesting class it's going to be modeled after a class that already exists so you can press shift twice and you can search for armor materials and you should find the armor materials in net Minecraft world item right here and you can see this is this is an enum and it contains basically leather chain iron gold and so on and so forth so all of the different vanilla armor materials are included here and what we're going to do is we want to position our cursor here on the netherite and we want to drag it all the way down not including the last closing curly bracket then press c and then go into our custom one right here we want to say implements the armor material interface right here and then instead of hovering over anything we just want to paste this in now we're going to get one error or we're going to get multiple errors here but and we're going to fix that by changing the name right here of the constructor from armor materials to mod armor materials and now almost everything goes away except for the util.make right here and this error can easily be fixed by changing it from a class to an enum and now all of a sudden no more errors should be present you can also take a look at the mod armor materials class once again in the github repository linked in the description just to make sure but basically that is the idea this is just a normal enum and if you want to have a second one right so maybe you're going to have like two or three different uh, armors then they are, need to be separated by commas right so you can see this is the opening parentheses this is the closing parentheses then a comma then it has to have a different name right so each individual armor obviously has to have a different name and then here you can see the last one opening parentheses this is the closing parentheses and the closing parentheses ends the last one ends with a semicolon that's the general idea so do keep that in mind and then you should be good to go now we want to rename this to amethyst and we want to rename this to amethyst as well now you can also play around with those numbers this is going to be the durability multiplier so all of the all of the normal durabilities right for the boots the chest plate and so on are going to be multiplied by this number maybe for amethyst we want this to be a little bit less you know something like that these are the defense capabilities for your boots leggings chest plate and so on that is the general idea here and then this is the enchantability so just you know how good the enchantments or things like that this is the toughness and this is the knockback resistance in this case and this is of course the ingredient that you are able to repair this with so in our case maybe it should be an amethyst shard but you can also of course take a look at the armor materials and pretty much just from well what you can see here you should understand what most of this basically means Right, that is all that we need in this class in this case so we can actually close this and we can continue to well create our items well we can continue to create the items so in the custom package we're going to right click new java class this is the amethyst armor item and this will extends the armor item class there you go 
we're going to hover over this, create constructor matching super. If once again, these annoy you, click on them, shift F6, and then we can just rename them. This is going to be the type and this is going to be the properties. There you go. And that's actually for now all that we need because now we're going to make the custom items first and foremost, and then we're going to make all of the Gekolib stuff in a moment. So we're just going to duplicate the animated block item here. We're just going to make this the amethyst underscore helmet, changing the class to the amethyst armor item. This one takes in first the armor materials dot amethyst comma, and then we can start typing in type and you can see this is of course the helmet and don't forget to change the name. So this is amethyst underscore helmet. And then we can just duplicate this three more times. And this is going to be the chest plate. And this is also going to be the name here, chest plate. There you go. And this is going to be the chest plate type. There you go. This is going to be the leggings, leggings here as well. And then this is, of course, also leggings type. There you go. And then this is going to be the boots. And this is going to be the boots as well. And then here, last but not least, boots. Amazing. Now, if you have data gen, then you can simply go to your item model provider right here and just add the, not the sampling item, but just a simple item. You can just duplicate that four times and then you can basically get the amethyst helmet, the amethyst chest plate, the leggings and the boots down here. There you go. And we can immediately just run run data because in this case, nothing else needs to be added. Uh, if you don't have the run data, it's just going to be normal item model files that point to your textures. So it's it's pretty much just normal items. And while this is running, I also added the translation, which at this point really should not be anything crazy. In this case, it's just normal translations. All right, that is basically the armor added, the data gen ran through. Now, if you don't want to use Gekolib, right, if for some reason you're like, oh, I actually didn't want to use Gekolib, or maybe you want one armor that doesn't use Gekolib, you can go to the external libraries and take a look at client extra 119.4, and you can go to assets, Minecraft, textures, and then under models, you, are, you will find armor, and then you can for example, see the iron layers, and this is going to be what you have to make then for your custom armor. So this has to be the name that you've given in the mod materials, right? So if we were to go back to our mod materials, this name right here, so it's amethyst underscore layer underscore one, needs to look kind of like this. And then the other one needs to be amethyst underscore layer underscore two, and it would be under the Minecraft namespace, so it would be assets, Minecraft, textures, models, armor, and then amethyst underscore layer underscore one and underscore two. That you can also do Otherwise, we can proceed with Gekolib models and with the Gekolib rendering stuff. For this, of course, we need to change the armor item. And for that, we need to implement the geo item interface right here. Once again, we're going to have all this implement the methods in this case. And what we're going to need is once again, a private animatable instance cache called cache, which is equal to a new single animatable instance cache passing in this. And we can immediately just return it right here. Absolutely splendid. The actual register controllers, once again, I will be copying this over because it is literally just the same that it is in the in all of the other items, right? The block item, the animated item, it's always the same. And in this case, the idle animation isn't even doing anything in this case. Then we also don't really need to get the animated tick. So that's actually also fine. The only other thing we need to do is we need to overwrite the initialize client method once more. And once again, we're going to just make a deliberate error here so I don't forget it. But that is going to be that. And for this, of course, we need the renderer. And to get the renderer, we need to also get the model. So in our client package, we're going to make the amethyst armor model. And we're also going to make the amethyst armor renderer. Starting with the model, we're going to extend the geo model of type amethyst amethyst armor item. There you go. And we're going to hover over this, implement the methods. Those are once again, the three methods, right? The get model resources, the texture and the get animation resource. So I'm just going to be copying those over because they're just resource locations that point to the JSON file, the JSON file and the PNG file that we've exported from Blockbench. Nothing crazy going on here. And the renderer is going to be a geo armor renderer of type amethyst armor item. We're going to hover over this once more and we're going to delete the parameter in the constructor and we're going to make a new amethyst armor model. Absolutely splendid. And that is what we need for the initialized client method. I'm going to actually copy over the method itself because it's actually going to be fairly straightforward. So you can basically see that we once again make a new iClient item extension over here in this case, which is going to be an anonymous class. It has a renderer inside of it. And then we're just going to make sure that if the renderer is null, then we're going to make a new renderer in this case. We're also calling prepare prep for render. This is extremely important that we have done this as well. And then we're just returning that renderer. 
That's all that we're doing here. So nothing crazy going on. And that should pretty much be it. And funnily enough, those are actually also all of the steps that we need to do, except for we also want to add this to the creative mode tab, because otherwise I will forget this again, because I, this is, this has been, the new creative mode tab stuff has been <laughs> some pr pretty crazy. Well, there we go. Now also all four items added there, and that should be that. So now we can run the client and see if everything works. All right, finds us back in Minecraft, and let's just take a look. And as you can see, there we go. The amethyst things have been added to the game, and let's see when we put them on. Absolutely splendid. So it is definitely a custom armor now. You know, it might lo look great. I will, I will readily admit that that I'm not the best modeler, but it definitely is a custom armor, as you can see. And it looks, I mean, it's it's pretty fun, right? It at least is a custom armor, so that's pretty awesome. And you know, you can of course now add all sorts of crazy other things, including some custom animations if you are so inclined to. But otherwise, it's pretty cool. Right, that's gonna be for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. So, yeah.